Hello and welcome to another episode of the Happy Head Podcast. I'm your host, Paul. Try saying that three times really quickly, especially when you take a breath at the wrong place. But never mind, I'm here and I'm still breathing. Today, I've got a brilliant guest. Her name is Emmanuel. Bonjour, Emmanuel. Comment ça va? Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. I'm okay. Now, I'm good. Very good. <laughs> the reason I said that is that you may detect a slight accent because Emmanuel wasn't born in the UK. She's from another place just across the water. Um, yes. From Burgundy, I think. Is that right? Or that area? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Burgundy. Yes. So, so how long have you been over in the UK then? I Is have it? been 22 years. So I came as a student uh, about 22 years. So, um, so yeah, I was brought up in France, um, single mom family, um, and uh, uh, lived up there. I studied languages. This is how, how I managed to come to the UK. Um, from, from when I was little, uh, um, I was brought, mom had mental health issues, so she struggled to, to bring me up. So I was brought up by a family friend who were foster carers. And they used to always have people from all, all nationalities in the house. Uh, they used to foster care children from even abroad. And uh, so that gave me an insight into people traveling and people from different culture. And I, and I was five or six and I used to always say, oh, when I'm, when I'm older, I will do like them. I will go and live, live somewhere else to, uh, all the time. So I used to say that. And uh, and yeah, that's what I ended doing. <laughs> uh, and when I got to uh, um, my yeah near twenty, I decided I wanted to study languages, and uh, that was the way I made it happen. Basically, studied uh, to be a translator, and uh, I had to come and do a work placement, and and there I came to the UK near London, and uh, and the rest is history. <laughs> I've been here for 22 years. I was meant to be here for three months and he ended being 22 years. <laughs> Not much of a difference, is it? You know, three months, 22 <laughs> years. It's yes. very close together, really, isn't it? Yes. But languages are amazing. And I'm, I just love it when you see kids speaking lots of different languages. And um, I worked at the Channel Tunnel for 25 years. And I had a friend there in the early years who was the son of an ambassador. And he was telling me um, that when he was a kid, they lived in a kind of square, a very posh square with like embassies on it, each of the corners. And they'd be playing football when they were like four, five, six years old. But there were kids from seven, eight different you know, nationalities, all playing football, all communicating together, but not speaking the same language. And it's just amazing yeah. how kids get to communicate, even though they don't say speak French or German or Italian or or whatever language. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But then as they get older, they kind of, it kind of separates from this mingled, jumbled language into separate languages, and they end up speaking separate languages. My friend, I think he spoke five or six languages fluently, simply because as a child of that kind of mixed environment. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, and you can really just mix in with people. I was married to, uh, to someone who is Albanian, I never learned the language at all like in an in a educational way. But just by mixing with them, after a year or two, I could understand all conversation, I could start conversing. So yeah, I can imagine kids missing, mixing together. You actually can get to, to understand each other without speaking the, yeah, without speaking the language, absolutely. I, can, I completely agree. I worked in France for quite a long, long time. But for the first few years, I was with British people all the time. So I was constantly speaking English. So I could I go, bonjour, ça va, de bien, s'il vous plaît. And that was the level of my French ability. <laughs> and yes. then in about, oh God, 1983 or 1984, somewhere around there, I got a job in a, a tiny no-star hotel in La Clusa, which at the time was a tiny, tiny, tiny little resort. And mm. I was there for about eight or nine months. And during yeah. the eight or nine months, only one English family came to stay at the hotel. And everything I had to do, I had to speak French. So when I was I was working as a waiter, mm -hmm. so you know, doing the breakfast and serving dinner and yeah. everything else, my leisure time was all in French. So my level went from like sort of ground floor, just rocketed. That total immersion was so good for yeah. me. 
And that's in the end what got me the job at the Channel Tunnel because I could actually speak French. Even French, yeah. I kind of Absolutely. left school at 16, you know. Yeah, uh, languages are amazing. Yeah. And it can get you in so many places and so in so many opportunities. Yeah, um, it, it's such a shame that English is the international language because I think if it wasn't, if English is more like, say, uh, Swedish or Dutch, hmm. more of us would learn different languages. But because we're in Ireland, oh, everybody speaks English, then people don't in this country tend people not... People don't in this country. And it's not in the culture. It's not... Yes. It's not even in school, you know. It's not. It's not, inco not naturally encouraged like it is in other countries. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's essential learn, as well. We must learn English in France. You must learn. You know, um, that's what you are told. You know, you must learn at least one language. But over here, it's it's not necessary. Everyone speaks English. Mm. Yeah. But it's funny, it's, as you say, you, you have to learn English. But I met so many French people who spoke English with an American accent. And <laughs> yes. when I figured out why, it was because they taught essentially American English and the kids were watching American soaps and American movies mm. in, yes. in American English. So they, they was, and it was just so bizarre. Because I'm thinking, you know, why is, you say you're speaking with an English, an American accent, they've never been to America, but it's just the way they would learned the language. But anyway, we're not here to talk languages. I think, what are we here to <laughs> talk about? What's your story, Manuel? Why are we chatting? We're chatting about health today. Um, because this is part of my journey. Health has always been in my life um, as a, I would say, kind of a background mm -hmm. um, with my health, but also my family's health. Um, most of my, well, my mum first and my uncles, everyone suffered from heart diseases, diabetes, depression. So whether physical or mental health, it was a theme, a really current theme in my in my um, teenage, my like childhood and teenage years. Because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, most of my uncles and my mum, everyone was was ill, everyone was sick. And um, by the time I was twenty, um, my mum was part of a huge family. They were fifteen children. Fifteen. And by the time yeah, fifteen. And by the time I was twenty, uh, seven of my uncles died of um, heart attack and uh, so this this was a theme in my life was oh my god you know what why why is why is this happening why why are they doing that is not um, you know why are they not living where others live and uh, gave me an interest in, in in health basically from that start and um made me want to you know have a good health and also i think that's where i got the the the, the willingness to also think of helping people because i wanted to i wanted to have answers i wanted to to find why why and then be able to stop all this you know um but i was i was very young obviously not in a position to do anything at the time and i had my own health problem i had for i had um uh, basically, gut gut disease, which which is um, uh, intestinal uh, inflammation, which mm -hmm. gives you like severe acid refl reflux. So I was sick a lot of the time. It made me like huge fatigue, and and I had that for years and years and years. And you know, I did all diets at the time. So, you know, I, I was a vegan at some point, vegetarian. Uh, and and nothing stopped it. Um, and so, but you know, life life gets in the way. You know, the parents encourage you to do something with your life. And you know, at the time, I mean, being a health coach, or which I was, you know, I, I am today, or it's not something that was encouraged. We were more encouraged to get into a nine to five job at the time and, and do something to, to really, you know, earn a salary. Basically, <laughs> you know, this this was the mentality. So. Uh, so uh, there I went, I went to do something, you know, I studied my languages uh, and then start, you know, came over here, found a job that, yeah, paid the bills basically. But, you know, over the years, and I've learned plenty, I've had long experience. I mean, I ended at the end, I was 12 years as a project manager, but this was not where I was, to me, it didn't feel like it was where I was meant to be, that what my life was about. Um, for me, I just, I was just happy doing this. Uh, despite I, I love the side of working with people, being a project manager, providing you know supporting teams. I love that side, but that was the only thing I loved about it. 
because I was just saying I didn't feel in the right place. I didn't, and you know, in my heart, it just it was yeah. just I, I felt I was going on more and more away from what made me happy. And uh, yeah, and, and and you know, I had difficult managers, and they, so it all came almost to a clash at some point, and it made me think, okay maybe it's time for me to walk away and really go and do what I want, you know. Was there, and, was there a, a specific thing that made you decide that that's it, I've had it now, I'm leaving, or was it a, a gradual decision to leave? Well, I thought about, um, I mean, I thought about becoming a health coach, but I think at the time I had a lot going on in my life. I went through a divorce. I, you know, I was a single mom. My, my, my kid was little. So I think I had a lot on my plate. And despite the idea was there at the time, I felt it was just too much for me to, to get to it and really start do, doing things I needed to do to make it happen. So for a few years, so it was not just a last minute thought, oh yeah, I've, I've had enough, oh, let's see what I can do. It was really something that matured in my mind. I mean, from when I was younger, but it was something that matured. I was, my, 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 my kid is 15 now, uh, at the time it was two. So at that point, I already started thinking, because I thought about what I wanted with life. And I thought, I mean, see, when you go through divorce, you obviously look at your life. And so at that time, it, I thought about it, but, you know, I needed to sort, sort things out first in my life and uh, and also, um, yeah, gain the confidence and, and, you know, have the right time moment to tell myself, yeah, it's time to go. So my kid grew and uh, I become maybe more mature as well as we do. And, uh, and yeah, I found the right moment. I mean, things were not going great. I didn't enjoy the job anymore. And... There was a lot of massive pressure, massive, massive pressure. So there were tensions in the team. And one day I just decided, I just thought, I just can't anymore. Because it was stressing me out. It was starting really stressing me out. I was, every day was a nightmare to go to work for me. I, I woke up in the morning and it was just, and I thought, oh God, see, this is the time. This is really the time to make that step and, you know, no matter what happens, it, it will be better than, than what it is now. So yes, I decided nice time to to, to finally do what I want. <laughs> yeah, project management is one of those high pressure roles because the very nature of it means there's an end date, and we have to stick to that end date as much as possible. But there are so many things that get in the way. The the end date keeps getting further and further away. So the the powers yeah. of people pull it back again and. So yeah, I can imagine it must be a really, really high pressure thing. And the targets were impossible. We'd reach one target and then they double it. And it was just, I was working at Ford, Ford Motor Company. So the targets were getting bigger. And it's just, it was like a hamster wheel for me. It really felt like a hamster wheel at the end. As much as I learned a lot, I enjoyed working with people and I enjoyed the job for a while. It got to the point where I felt I was really running really fast in a hamster wheel <laughs> and it was just exhausting. It was just exhausting and you felt always it was never reached because the targets were changing all the time. You know, the more we could do, the more they piled up and <laughs> it was just impossible for me at some point. And I just thought I can do, I started thinking I really can do much better with my life and helping more people because I thought about the coaching and I thought you know I could be out there helping people um, because obviously because I wanted I knew I wanted to go into health coaching I was I spent a lot of time studying you know I'm reading every time doing courses I mean I, I did NLP because I also look at the mind for me it's not just the body is it's all together the mind is important and you know uh, conscious subconscious everything is is into play so I also studied to be an NLP practitioner so I, I started putting things into place at this point but I had to make that step of of leaving and and it's not always as easy as you think it is because when you've been so long in in a kind of a environment to get out and suddenly welcome to <laughs> welcome to the entrepreneurial world is it can be a bit uh, daunting at first when you think about it but yeah for me it was the time to to move on basically how did you make the transition from being full-time 
in a you know in the corporate world to, to working for yourself did you kind of like leave and then the next day you were working as a coach or did you have like a side hustle while you were working I had a side time? hustle because I had a side hustle because I had I have to still now now do now and then I still do uh, some um, you know like some assignments you know now and then to because I'm a single mom there's only one income there so and I'm only been the and also when I've I was so under so much pressure, so much stress. I was burning out as well. Mm -hmm. So when when I left for a while, I, I didn't feel great actually because suddenly all the stress that I had piled up for years kind of dropped on me, and I went a bit uh, on the other side. <laughs> I was just uh, I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. I, I suddenly because this, uh, that's where you realize what stress can do to you. I was really exhausted and mentally and physically I felt. And that's why the lockdown happened. And um, I remember I was still trying to hustle and I was into the hustle kind of way of life. You know, I could not stop, I had to do things. And uh, when the friend came and looked at me and she said, Emma, why don't you just chill a bit? Why don't you, why don't you stop and, you know, to just recover a little bit? Because she said, because I was saying to her, I was like, oh, I'm so knackered, I'm so tired, I'm so tired. I was just like, I say, I think it's just the stress just gone down suddenly. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I had, I, I did some therapy as well, because I had things I hadn't dealt with. And I thought, mm -hmm. I, I really need to get myself in a good place so I can coach people. Because if you're going to start coaching people and you're not in a good place, um, you can't do it. You can't do it. It's not, I mean, it's not good for you, but it's not good for the client side as well. And I really want to support people the best way possible, not while I'm, I'm you know, um, you know, hopping and, <laughs> you know. So uh, I did I did quite a lot of therapy uh, in that time. I, I took that time to really look inside and really heal what needed to mm -hmm. be healed and and get myself in a really good frame of mind, so and strong, so I can uh, get back to uh, yeah being myself and and being in a position to help people. So body, I did. Uh, so yeah. I'm say the, the the body has its way of forcing you to slow down. Um, yeah. I mean, it's like a lot of people they they work 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 really really hard. And then they get maybe a week's vacation. And for that week that they're on vacation, they suddenly get the flu or they, yeah, they just get absolutely. ill because the body goes, yeah. right, OK, we're not at work now. We are going to make you rest. And it just floors people. And I used to see it a lot in my work. People would be working really hard, you know, 10 hour days, 12 hour days, all this kind of thing. And they'd get a week's vacation or two weeks vacation. They'd come back and go, oh, do you have a great holiday? And they went. No, why not? I was in bed for two weeks. <laughs> exactly. The and that's what was... happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and so I think exactly what happened. When I stopped, it's just all it floored me. It literally floored me. I had no energy whatsoever. I had mental fog. So I was trying to work on the business. But I thought, oh, okay, let me get started. I could not. I, I had brain fog. I was exhausted. I'd sleep. 10 hours at night and two hours later I'd wake up and I'd feel so tired again. I was just in that state of tiredness. It was, I just had to get rid of all the stress. Every stress I had, I had built up, it just had to come out. And so at some point I just kind of accepted it because for me, I've always been a high performer as well. I was a high, one of the highest performer in the team. So I've always been the high performer, the one, who, the, you know, I was a single mom, I coped with it, you know, everything was like, I was like on high basically. And uh, to suddenly find myself down, that down. Um, but I think everything came to, to really make me stop because then my mom died as well. So that kind of brought in really, uh, okay, you've got to stop. And and so uh, is the best. Not my mum dying, but stopping is the best thing I've ever done for myself, because I dealt with everything I needed to 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 heal or anything that was not right and anything. To look at my life and really improve the way I was living. And and I've taken so much so much hassle out of my life and so much. I've got my quality of life is completely changed. Completely is. Uh, 
in, I feel at is the peace is brought <laughs> is uh, unbelievable. Yeah, and, and you know you don't realize because you just stuck you know you're just stuck into commuting stuck into and i think for for us the lockdown and i know we we all struggling a bit we all been fed up with it but it was a time for people to okay just put the brake on and look within and see you know whatever way you can improve your life and we've been given that time and it's nice to slow down <laughs> actually <laughs> i actually enjoy it i think a lot of people have taken the time to slow down because we, we just don't realize how much we push ourselves some people you know they're working monday to friday 12 hours a day plus a couple of hours commuting they take work home they work over the weekend and it becomes like this never-ending cycle and i think the the lockdown for quite a few people has forced them to kind of stop and then reevaluate how they're living their lives now, a lot yeah. of people said to me, oh, Paul, Paul, the world's going to change completely once lockdown ends. And I disagree. But what I think will happen is that a lot of people will, will reassess their lives and go, well, look, OK, I've been furloughed. So I'm an 80 percent of my salary and we've still managed. Do I really need to commute four hours a day? Can I not find something that will pay yeah. me what I'm earning now? locally so i don't have to commute or can i just work from home permanently so i think there'll be a lot of people yeah. reassessing their their needs to figure out whether they still need to have that big job in in the city kind of thing but also i think employers will have to reassess how they employ people because there's a lot of people now work from home as well they don't want to go back to five days of commute and, and i think it's gonna for me i think the lockdown gonna open up a little bit mentality. Oh, well, I hope so. I hope it will open up mentality around working and because it's not it's not you you can't you can't just live under that pressure all the time. It's just not good. For, it's not good for your for your mind. It's not good for your health. It's not good for anything, you know. And we can't. It was too much too much pressure on people to just rush 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 and achieve 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 without really taking care of themselves and having time for having time for that and because if you don't well at some point it breaks <laughs> you know yeah. it's like a car if you push the car at some point and you don't give it services or anything well at some point the car breaks down and goodbye <laughs> yeah, it's so true mm -hmm. but i think nobody knows what's going to happen that's the reality and we just have to kind yeah. of see what happens when it happens um, so you're a health coach. What do you have a, a specialism within that that you work on? Yes, for me is a ketogenic lifestyle and fasting. And for me, it's about uh, what I, I love about it, uh, and it's helped my health. Um, that's where it all comes from. Um, is the therapeutic side. I mean, okay, we all love uh, the fact that ketogenic diet can help you burn fast, but burn fat faster than maybe other diets, which is we all love this. <laughs> but for me, it's all the the healing side of it. Is uh, it can help with inflammation? He can. I mean, it's completely ended all my symptoms. It's completely. It's for me. It's restored my health completely. And uh, fasting has got so many healing properties. I mean, it's not just something new is something that's been around, I mean, from the caveman, really. The caveman, it, it was their lifestyle, and they used to live, uh, this used to be their lifestyle, fasting some of the day, eating whatever they could find in nature. So it was, you know, animals. So animals, they had the same as a ketogenic diet and fasting uh, lifestyle, exactly the same. And for, but for me, it's just exploring all the healing side of it and all the healing properties. And um, that's why, for me, I, I love the fact I've, I've, I am now educated to to empower people to uh, to understand their health, understand what how the body works, and how they can, uh, fasting can be incorpor incorporating in their life and can help them as well um, to improve their health and and. Because fasting is, a lot of people saying fasting is just starving yourself, but it is not. It's, it's more about when to eat rather than not eat. Is you know, you get time where you don't eat and then you can have 
you can eat to satiety. That's how I eat. I eat only two meals a day, but I'm full. I don't feel hungry ever. And, and I can go 20 hours with no food. But because I've eaten to satiety, um, I'm okay. And it's, it's about educating people how all the variants. There's so many variants of fasting. It doesn't have to be as well because people think more of fasting is a long fast. You know, you hear some people who fast for 20 days or, you know, you don't have to do that to have the benefit of of the he the healing properties of fasting. And, and I think it's important, especially today, with, you know, where we've seen what happened with the coronavirus. I mean, if people were educated enough on fasting to know, I mean, how to how to play with it, so and understanding their body, um, the immune systems, where well, our immune system would be so much better, and and we would, most of us would be able to fight a virus much in a much better way than than we are today, um, and. Yeah, because yeah, it's just amazing the process of uh, of uh, fasting as well. After when you get your glucose, because it gets your glucose down, so your insulin down after after several hours, and then it, it kicks in some processes in your body. And autophagy is one of them. And autophagy, what autophagy does, you regenerate your cells. Is basically because our body is very clever. Is got innate, innate intelligence, and so autophagy. Basically, your body goes, okay, it's a cell. There's some parts who are damaged, and there's some parts who are good. And the body is intelligent enough to to uh, to differentiate the, the bad cells, and then works on them, and and uh, you know break them down and regenerate them into good cells. So you renew your cells. So for people who have inflammation, I've, there's been studies of people who had inflammation and removed completely. Like for, for the gut, for me, that's that's amazing tool for me with with the acid reflux I had. So obviously it came from the gut, it came from the from the intestine. I've regenerated my my gut cells and uh, is the result is amazing because I don't have any acid reflux anymore. It's just completely changed my health, basically. Was it a combination of the ketogenic diet and the fasting that sorted out your health problems, or was it one or the other? It's both, because also for fasting, fasting is better when you're already fat adapted. Fat adapted means you, you've been on keto and you've lowered your, your insulin and you switch to burning fat. So generally with clients, I wouldn't advise a client to go from a high carb diet to start fasting because it is gonna, gonna experience, they're not fat, fat adapted. They're not used to still getting the, the, shoes, you know, the sugar spikes, the glucose spikes that you get when you eat carbs and you eat sugar. So when you start fasting, if you're not, uh, you, you're still on, on, on the carbs, the effect is, uh, is the most stress on your body. This is where it is. Why, if you are already on keto, your your body is already used to 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 not have so much glucose. You you're burning fat already. This is a smooth transition. So, what do you mean exactly by fat adapted? Does that mean that you're only eating kind of animal fats uh, and fruit, or what does it mean exactly? What's so the, the, the keto diet? So the keto diet is basically a high fat diet moderate protein and very and low carb diet so wh when you are on keto you remove all carbs or sugar um, down to 20 i mean if you really start someone who wants to lose a lot of weight for instance we'd get the carbs down to 20 grams uh, 20 grams per day which is not that much um, uh, carbs to eat but so you start so what happened when you do this Obviously, because you're not overloading with carbs and sugar, your sugar levels will go down. And there's a level when your sugar levels go down, you then reach a level where your body has got no, no glucose, because your body needs to burn energy. And the first energy your body is going to burn is, is all, your, all your insulin, all the glucose. So when your body runs out of glucose, your body automatically, that's just an innate power that your body has, will then switch to burning the fat you have in your body. 
So when I say you are fat adapted, it means you you've done keto, you've done done a keto diet. You are basically your glucose level are mostly down to the point that your 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 body burns turn to burning fat. But you, this is something you can play with right? because it's not you you're not supposed to always be burning fat. You're supposed to have both. And anytime you eat anyway, even if you eat meat or if you eat not you know not a keto keto a keto diet you your insulin level whatever meal you have your insulin level will go up it goes much higher with a, a high carb diet for instance so because you need insulin insulin is an hormone that we mm. all need so it's 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 automatically running in your body but yes a keto diet basically lowers um lowers your glucose levels and then your body automatically switch. And, and so then, I don't know if you heard of ketones, because people who are on keto diet talk about ketones. When your body switch to burning fat, your liver produce ketones. And ketones are energy molecule who basically, are, and that's where people get their energy. It pro is a different source of energy than glucose. Glucose gives people because people think glucose give me my energy. People who do a lot of um, uh, sport activity, like runners, marathon, they all like, oh yeah, let's load on carbs, let's load on carbs. But um, ketones are a great, great energy, much purer energy, and that's why you will you will hear people who are on on a keto diet would say to them, oh my energy has changed. Uh, my, I've got more mental clarity, and yeah, it does. And and that's why I'm fasting as well, because if you fast, you're a longer time without eating, so obviously you completely empty your glucose level and then burn the fat, and you obviously produce the ketones, and ketones are a, 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 a very pure energy molecule, and it's great for the brain, great for the, the body, and, so, and yeah. it has some soothing, so, soothing uh, properties as well. Okay, um, so how long approximately does it take that if you're on like a, a standard normal diet and then you decide to go on to a keto diet, how long does it kind of take before you become um, fat adapted, as you were saying? Is that is that months? Is it days? Is it weeks? No, no, no. Uh, it can be generally someone very new who really had a high, high level of carbs, who really a carb. I, I used to be one of them. I use, I, I am French, <laughs> you know, <laughs> love of bread and <laughs> love of pasta, love of bread. I used to be like a car, carb machine, basically. <laughs> When I started, um, it, it had the, your glucose level is going to take a few days, and then you will start feeling that yeah, your body is changing. Um, um, yeah, it takes a few days. I mean, three, four days to get to that uh, for someone who's really like on high carbs. Uh, me, if I if I let's say I go for a few days, I'm going to go on carbs again. So obviously, I, I'll be out of uh, all the ketosis, all the um, uh, keto diet. So if I go back, um, for me, I can get to that now within the day. Because even if I just do a few days, I'm I've, I've emptied before. I, I will be. Um, it will take more or less time. But for someone, yeah, a few days generally it takes. Okay. Um, so. If we're saying we're cutting out the carbs, we're eating, I'm assuming, lots of vegetables and yep. meat, pretty much. So meat, fish, um, so fat, fat, you can have fat from avocados. We're looking at good fat, so uh, fat from uh, butter, butter, cheese. Um, and in terms of uh, vegetables, not every vegetables are okay on keto because some, like you, you take potatoes, they're high in carbs. Yeah, sure, so you not need potatoes, to yeah. So you, you're more like uh, eating grains. Um, and, uh, but when you first start, when I started keto, I was strict keto because I wanted to lose the weight as well. And I wanted to really experience what keto could do for my health. But uh, now I have been for I have been nearly six years now I've been doing keto, so yeah I've experienced it. All. And uh, but now I allow myself one day of carbs. When I say carbs, for me is I'm eating sweet potatoes or something quite nourishing. Uh, and and it's only um, I only have two meals a day, so it's not a day where I'm going to have a high amount of carbs. But once a day, once a week, sorry. 
uh, a wheel of carbs. Uh, I, I basically, my schedule is five days of uh, keto, um, pretty strict keto. I, I do about 50 grams of keto per day rather than 20 grams because I don't need to lose so much weight now. Mm. Um, so I do 50 grams of, ke- of, of, um, carbs. of carbs and then quite high in protein. Because protein is great, is we eat protein and and it's good for it's good for us. And uh, I do, uh, yeah, me I eat loads of meat, uh, loads of meat and and yeah, fats. I try to have fats, you know, olive oil, butter, anything I can, yeah, any fat I can uh, uh, nourish myself. Are you saying two meals a day? So like for breakfast at seven or eight o'clock and then dinner. Five, six, seven p.m. Something like that. No, I, I don't. I don't have. I don't have breakfast because what I practice is intermittent fast fasting. Oh, okay. So uh, you probably heard of it. Yeah, a yeah. lot of people have heard of it. So I try to space the time. So I have my last meal at around seven o'clock at night. Um, I try to get basically my first meal the next day as late as possible. At the moment, I'm on around for twenty hours, so I don't eat before two. The, between two and three o'clock but um intermittent fasting it took me years i built this up uh, very slowly i wouldn't say to someone new okay don't don't eat breakfast tomorrow and you know what what you do with when i have a new client if you have any client i um basically say okay what time have you got your breakfast they said to me or oh, six o'clock i say well try and push it to eight and then we push it to 10 and you build up. I built up fast, fast same for fasting. Uh, I didn't, I mean, now I can fast up to three, three, four days a week, three, four, three, four days in a row. Um, no, a week, <laughs> that's a lot a week. I do once a month. I do once a month, I do a three, four days fasting. Uh, but I build up over, over a year, you know, I started 16 hours fasting, 18 hours, 20, 24. And then 36, 48, uh, you build it up. And but it's the benefits, the health benefits, the energy, the regenerating the cells, and even physical. I, I had a, a sprained ankle and I could not get rid of the inflammation. I was constantly inflamed, and the fast finally removed it because I regenerated all the cells because you regenerate everything. So what are we got going on at the moment, Emmanuel? What are you doing at the moment? So at the moment, I I just, I started my business. So I didn't start straight after straight in the lockdown, as I said, as I was saying earlier. Uh, I am in the process of yes, yeah, I'm just kicked off uh, about three weeks ago. So I'm working on the business. Um, I've opened up a group, Facebook group, and uh, working on my offers at the moment because I'm gonna have to, you know, obviously, or offer coaching. But I wanna offer, you know, build some materials as well as for. But I, I wanna have probably. I will have a membership. I will have a program at some point that people can can join. So I'm I'm working on all these basically because for me it's important that people can have yeah support um on the health because we all want to have a good health but as you know in, you are into coaching as well without the actionable steps it's hard it's mm. hard um you know um um obviously i was really into it so i i, I did my own journey in my health but you know, sometimes people need support. Sometimes it's just, uh, and yeah, especially fasting and keto. It's just, there's so much, you know, things that can help you have a much better. I've got friends who started by themselves and, you know, say, oh, you know, I'm struggling there or there. There's so many little things. If you have the support and so many good advice you can get, that makes a big difference. And yeah, actionable steps. It's not just about deciding, oh, yeah, I want to be healthy. If you haven't got a plan, it's like anything if you have not the plan to oh, really yeah. get it it's not going to happen uh, we we know that we know i think we <laughs> we all experience it um, so yeah for me it's about yeah getting the the steps in place for people to to, to can re- and you know also the accountability because you know being on keto and fasting is, is i mean it's great for your health but doing it by yourself is 
you know, I, I am part of the court. I have a keto coach. I'm part of an academy. So I have all the support. I have all the learning. I've got an amazing coach in the US. Yeah, he's a guy in the US. And uh, he, he's working with all the, the, the big personalities in the keto uh, business and fasting business in America. So we get all, I would get told the, you know, the master classes. So I'm constantly learning as well and be part and, and and it gets you to learn as well to really understand the body so it's not just you don't not just join you know a diet club you just really learn how to look after your health understand your body understand i mean even for us like you know women you know we've got hormones how your hormones play so how can you, you can use fasting to help your hormones how you can use keto to help your hormones you know, we all go in, I mean, even men, huh? men, <laughs> testosterone. Even men, <laughs> you know, we all get in all. <laughs> so all listen, going. Emmanuel, um, where can people reach you if they want to find out more about keto and fasting and your method of doing these things? They can reach me on my profile and then uh, and can message me. And uh, I'm opening up, opening up a new group because I had a health and wellness group so far, but it was more of a, well, it was based around keto because obviously it is, but it was more a general group. Now I'm opening a dedicated to keto and fasting group. So that's really people that really want to, to get a more specific service from me. Um, the other wellness group is, it's helping everyone, but it's not tailored to people right. who really want to okay. experience. So um, I will open. So if they, if people want to contact me on my, on my profile and uh, message me directly and um, uh, and uh, I can guide them to, to the group and us and yeah. Excellent. So, um, I've got one question that I kind of ask everybody. If you could go back in time, Manuel, to change something about, you know, an aspect of your life, would you? So if you could go back in time to change anything, would you go back and would you change something? Um, I think we all do. Uh, I would, yes, I would. I would, uh, I would, um, for me, I just wish I had discovered the personal development side of things um earlier in my life okay because it would have given me more courage to really go for what i wanted and really better my life really i mean not that i have a bad life not that i've done bad but i, I see so much benefit of being where i am now and to have to be surrounded by the right people uh it makes such a difference and you know the learning yeah um I mean, I suppose things change. Everything, there's so much available online today. Everything is available to us. I mean, even look, we are doing a podcast. I, I listen to so many podcasts on, on anything I want, on mindset, on health, on whatever you want. There's so much available. And uh, so, yeah, th this is something I wish I had discovered things before, but it's not so much of a regret um you know for me i just believe things happen when they need it to happen so um if you're not meant to be in a place at a certain time it's, you're just not there that's it you know i could have started my i could because otherwise you can start saying you know i could have started my mm. business years ago but the situation was just not around for me to do or for us to do uh, you know it's uh so i would change but not in a regret kind of way um but yeah, uh, when I entered the personal development world was way, uh, was a good day, I think. <laughs> and changed changed my life. <laughs> Listen, I will put links to uh, your profile in, in the show notes. Thank you so much for your time today, Manuel. I really appreciate you, you coming welcome. on. And it's uh, kind of opened my eyes a little bit to the world of um, keto and uh, fasting. Yes, super. Super. Thank you so much. Thank I'll you for having me. Soon. It was a pleasure to speak to you. We'll see you later. Care. Bye now.